Hey guys and welcome to YouTube channel one on one. So today we're going to be making this commercial in Blender. I get a request a lot to do something like this. So why not? If you're a Patreon or YouTube member, I'm going to upload a starter a file that looks like this and contains most of the, the assets uh, that I'm using. So if you're on Patreon or or if you get the projects on Gumroad, you should be able to find uh, the starter file with uh, most of the things we're going to be using and I uh, even prepared uh, this can cutting animation let's start with this can animation because we start with a spin and then the can opens up to reveal the contents and uh, then closes back just like that so i have a can animated like this just a simple rotation uh, with a few keyframes because i wanted this to be moving around i also just parented it to an empty to using control p and just animate that so i can start up there with a simple animation like that and if you want to open up the can we're going to use a shader and i'm also going to need an extra empty so i'll just let me just duplicate this and I'll scale it down and just parent it to the same object here to the same empty i want to just animate it moving in the z axis so uh it will be the object controlling our gradient so you can see it's moving up in the z axis like that now i can come to this can and uh, in its material this and set up a gradient that i'm going to use ctrl t to bring in these coordinates texture coordinates and uh, if you look at the gradient uh, this is how it looks and uh, it's going in the wrong direction i want to rotate it it needs to be rotated in the y direction 90 degrees so that is something like that and i want to control it using this object this empty that i've animated to go up and down so i can come here and select this empty and now i should be able to control this uh, except i have to change this from generated these coordinates to, from generated to object that way i can have the animation of this controlled by that empty so when i move this up on the z axis it can control that so that's what we have and uh, now I, I just want to mix two shaders uh if we go inside here inside this can you can see the interior is still showing what we're seeing on the inside uh, i don't want that i want the interior to be a uh, metal metallic so i'll just use uh, another principal shader but metallic so if i just preview this and remove any color so this is I'll give it some roughness just like that so i want the interior to look like that uh, and the it in the outside to look different i'm just going to use the geometry node uh, which has back facing uh, meaning faces that are facing back can get a, a different mask so if i move to that you can see that this looks different from the interior so i can just mix these and uh, use this mask to determine what side of the face shows what material so uh, i'm just going to flip this so that the inside faces uh, show this metallic face and uh, the, the outside i want to use the gradient we just created uh that we which we unmate which we are unmating uh, i want to use an alpha mask so let me use a transparency blend these two i can control the the transparency of this uh, if you're using if you're reviewing this with ev you have to change the material to use alpha clip uh, so that you can see the transparency uh, take effect otherwise if it's on opaque you won't see you won't be able to see anything so just make sure it's set to clip and uh, i can now just use this gradient as my mask here and now this is animated the way i want i can do the same for this for this here all i have to do is just copy this setup these these nodes ctrl c ctrl v paste them here and just substitute uh the second shader we had here like that so now we get that animation so the next thing we have here yeah let's create this 
splash fluid splash we can start by adding a domain which is just going to be a cube and give it a fluid setting domain liquid we can start with 64 and now we want an emitter and you can just use a simple mesh curve just like this and uh, make sure it's parented to your can about there and just parent it so let's make sure that everything moves with it and uh, and you can give it some thickness so just going to extrude this down just like that maybe spread it out and uh, give this a few yeah just like that I can also give this a displacement modifier just to give it some unevenness and uh, the strength doesn't have to be that bad and that bad much give it some subdivisions and uh, let me scale it out a bit and also another thing i could add is a solidify modifier to give it some thickness just a bit like that that's going to be our emitter and uh, we can give it a fluid type inflow oh and uh, this is supposed to be liquid and yeah make sure that the flow behavior is inflow and give it some initial velocity just like that if we simulate uh, we don't have enough particles so you can go to the flow source and turn on is planner sometimes you have to do that to get that work the initial velocity seems to be too much so let me do 0.1 and see if that helps yeah that's great but the fluid is just flowing down we don't want any gravity so i'll select the domain and and I can also remove all these collision bounds to speed up the simulation. It will help speed, speed up the simulation. I can go to the field weights, bring the gravity down. Now we have something like that. We don't want this to, to emit continuously. So I can just unmate this, unmate the flow off. So at frame 10, I can turn it off. So I have set two keyframes. At frame 1, at frame 9, we have on, and at frame 10, we have the flow off. So if we simulate this, it stops at some point. But I want more turbulence than what we have here. So I'm going to add a turbulence force. Uh, let's bring the size to 1, and uh, let's bring the strength to 1. Uh, maybe the size could be point 0.1. Yeah, so you have to play with the settings until you get something uh, that you like. Let me also just preview the fluids by turning on a meshing uh, so that I can see the actual fluid we are trying to simulate. Yeah, you can increase the resolution. At all. Let me just work with 64 for the case of the tutorial. And uh, another thing I could do is uh, just select this object and move the flow animation close to the start so that we are not emitting too much fluids. And uh, yeah, I want a ring like that. Uh, so another thing I could do is uh, come to the this and just increase the source, the initial velocity to maybe 0.3. Yeah, you, you will have to play with the numbers, see what you get. And uh, you can also play with uh, the smooth, positive, negative, and these settings to get uh, better looking fluids. You can also look at the project files I have and see the settings I use here. Uh, so if I select this and I go to the fluid settings, in the meshing, you can see I use a smooth positive of two and negative is four and uh, concavity and lower is uh, four. These are some of the settings I use uh, to get the fluids to look like this and uh, the resolution I used was 300. Surprisingly, it didn't take a lot of time to bake. I think it took about uh, maybe 10 minutes to bake 300 resolutions and I was baking about only 100 frames. So, so that's how you get that to work. Uh, because we have the bounds uh, the, the border collisions set off, uh, the fluids will disappear eventually, which helps 
with the simulation to run faster and uh, it also helps that uh, the fluid doesn't bounce back into the domain uh, to create a lot of chaos uh, we don't want that we want something clean and another thing i did is uh, when i got the results i wanted uh like uh, at around let me see what frame was it uh, let me go back to this i think at this frame here this was a good rain good stage i just applied the simulation so for example here i duplicated you can duplicate the simulation and you have a, two copies of the simulation and now you can just apply the the simulation so that you have a static mesh like this uh, that you can use in other areas and basically that's what i did and uh, uh, I used it as an extra element in the render in the background here. So you can see that as extra detail there. And uh, I also use it in as an instance when I create these slices. Uh, so I think it adds an interesting layer of detail uh, to the shot. The other thing that was left is, uh, yeah, creating these, these slices, making these slices pop out of the mesh so i'm just going to select these slices and go to our project file here and just paste them i want them to be in a collection so i'll just let me turn off keyframe recording i'll move them to a collection just call the call it one and uh, i can select this and go to geometry nodes and start start working on the instancing of this so the way i instance these are uh, to be popping out of the let me offset this animation a bit So I'll offset it so that we set the animation there. And now let me just disable the simulation for, for now. Okay, so this is where we are. So I want to have these, these slices come out of this. So uh, I'm using geometry nodes. I'm going to use geometry nodes so that I can set it up here. And uh, we want to start with a line curve, a curve line, just like this. And you can see it's just going out. I'm going to change the, its direction to so that is coming out of the can and if i join these two you can see that is is coming out of this can here and uh, uh let me just make some room here and uh, i'll have this as the last setup yeah so that we can just simply work uh, let me also add another reroute re 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 node here okay right, so this is where we are we can we can use curve two points so that we can turn these into as many points as we want and uh, then from there we can use instance on points and bring in our oranges here and uh, i can just separate children reset and pick instances there and now we have our oranges i like that we don't need that many uh, we can have something like that another thing that i uh, that uh, that i need is uh, the splash we created i'm just going to borrow what i have in the status file here so copy that and uh, just paste it in here. Uh, apply the scale and make sure it's also part of the collection you're using here. And uh, now if we preview, if you preview this, you can see we also have that in there. And uh, I'm going to come in here and just make sure it's, it's uh, a nice scale. And uh, let's go back to the can. Perfect, we have now that inside, layered inside there, like a sandwich. Let's have some random scale value here. Just add it there. Nice. Another thing we could do is uh, a random rotation. So I'll just use a vector here and connect that to that. We don't want these to intersect on your side. Uh, so I want some randomness, but uh, I don't want it to be too much. So let me just, especially for these values here. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and I want this to be animated so I can use a combine X, Y. So some randomness like that under this here. So I can just use at the same time. And now you can see how that is animated. So another thing, uh, these are all in a single line. We can move them a bit so that they're not in the same line by introducing some noise here. So I can use a set position here. Uh, if I just look at the curve itself, you can see this is our line. I can use a noise texture, texture here, use it in the offset. And we don't have enough points in the curve, so I will resample uh, the curve. 
so that we have quite a few. And uh, since those are what these oranges are being uh, instanced on, we get the displacement. But uh, remember, the noise is usually usually has an offset, so I will subtract that using vector math. So subtract 0.5, so that is goes it goes back in position. And I want to have control over how much displacement I have. So if you want to do that, and I don't want any vertical displacement. I just want uh, horizontal. So I'll just add another scale value here, uh, vector value here, and just multiply all the values except the z by zero. So that I'm only scaling these horizontally like so, which is, so what we can do, we have this scale value here that we can control. I can bring in another scale value here, a vector math, so I can scale these like this. And uh, a value of one is, is full scale and a value of zero, basically everything disappears. And uh, same for this curve line here, if we just, Preview that. If I add, if I scale it, uh, I think I, I would have to scale it up after the displacement. Yeah. So if I just bring the preview here, there is no scale scale option for curves. You have to use a set position and then a position node like this and plug this into the position. It doesn't really do much, but if you use vector math, a uh, vector math with a scale option, you can scale this the way you want. So yeah, that's how we're going to deal with that. So I'm going to use this now. Uh, so if I control this scale, you can see we get that. Uh, most of the values we are looking at here, like this here, it's use, it uses a scale of zero to one. Uh, same with the random scale here. It also uses a scale of zero to one. And I can also duplicate this here. And uh, if I don't want any random rotation, I can just remove that uh, by using a scale of zero to one. So since these are all values of zero to one, I can bring in a value node uh, that is set to one. And I just use it to control everything uh, that has a scale uh, vector. So right there. Now, what was this? Uh, this was a displacement. I don't think I need to do that. Uh, so now I can control the scale and the rotation just using this value. So you can see, so I can easily animate this and uh, just time this uh, the way I want. So this starts off when it's inside. I'll add a keyframe there. So when it's time to get it back, you just pull that, just like that. So, yeah, so that's uh, how I did that. And then the last thing I added was these leaves uh, that are quite simple to do and uh, uh, maybe the droplets. Yeah, so for the droplets, you can see it's just a, a very simple setup. I just dis distribute a few points on the can and uh, inst instance uh, the droplet which you can get in the project file as well yeah this droplet here i just instance use that as the instance you can see how i'm using the single value to animate a bunch of values here for the leaves i'm using the same curve line distort it and uh, set a position for it and i give it some thickness like that and uh, distribute a bunch of points on uh, that curve it still has the same animation we had before and uh, distribute uh, the leaves on to on top of that just like that and uh, that's how i get that and i add some randomization to the scale randomization to the rotation and uh, yeah, that's how i ended up with this animation so yeah you can see how everything turned up uh, you just bump up the resolution set up some lighting and uh, you're good to render project files are going to be on my youtube memberships page gumroad and my patreon if you want this stuff uh, stories like this just let me know in the comments i would also appreciate a like and uh, it helps let youtube know that you guys love this 